Hey everybody, Ian Campbell here, and today I wanted to bring you the encyclopedia of bodyboarding. We are gonna be talking about bodyboarding moves and tricks that you may have never heard of. These are the most unorthodox moves in bodyboarding. Some going against the normal movement and some just plain wacky. We started with the beginner and intermediate moves and then transitioned to the more advanced moves in part two. If you haven't seen these videos, I'll link them down below in the description and you can go and check them out. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Dave Hubbard who has helped me better explain and understand these moves as well as what it takes to land them. As someone you will see on this list a few times, he has been known to try some crazy things on a bodyboard and even land a few too. For now, let's get into these moves. First off, let's start with the invert to air reverse or the inverse. This is a move that combines two moves we have spoken about previously the invert and the air reverse. This move probably started when there was an over rotation from an invert and instead of trying to land it side on or backwards, someone crossed their legs and went into the reverse. This is the most doable and possibly the peak of these unorthodox moves in looks and landing. This has been a popular move to do and was shown a few times in competition over the years. The inverse is one of those moves that can be done by mistake but also has a functional purpose due to your legs sometimes overtaking your body when in the air. If you are doing an invert and tweaking or looking back, the legs can start to pass you, which will make the invert tough to land as you will be facing side on or backwards. But the inverse is a very natural rotation if you are tweaking an invert and pushing back from the projection of the lip. What happens is your legs will overtake your head position and by tucking in, you can maintain the initial spin. After crossing your legs, you allow momentum to take you through the full spin. It is a very fluid but highly advanced move that makes more sense if you understand where your body is in relation to the wave. Rotational speed can be beneficial during the landings as sometimes you will stop or plunge as you hit the water but if you have the speed, it can move you away from the impact and regain control and forward motion, riding out after the spin. Next, we are going to talk about the reverse roll. Although I've tried this a number of times, I have yet to be successful in landing one. The reverse roll is not the hardest move to do on this list, but in order to land it, you really need to have a smooth takeoff and a smooth landing. It is possibly the most pleasing of all of these unorthodox moves to see, due to the initial change of direction and fluidity. This helps the move to be done smoothly and in one motion. This is a little surprise from the change of direction, but visually it is so good to watch. This goes against the common rotation of a roll, where you actually end up reversing your momentum after hitting the lip and coming down with very limited control. But it allows you to prepare for the landing. When these are completed, they look super smooth. This is probably the only functional move on this list that can be done with a combination of moves on the same wave. And this is the building block to some of the other moves on this list. If you guys are interested to learn more about bodyboarding, head on over to boogieeveryday.com. We have a membership platform where we release weekly videos, podcasts, tips and tricks, as well as sending you guys an awesome sticker pack when you first subscribe. So head on over to boogieeveryday.com and check it out. We now go on to the double roll. And simply put, this is two rolls in one movement. This is done by corking your body, rotating a lot faster, and keeping the board really close in. This is a difficult move to do. The reason is you have to speed up your momentum when leaving the lip, and that forces you to really push through the first roll into the next. The double roll is a very violent move when landing, as you're speeding up on the rotational movement. This forces you to heavy landings when you hit the water, often forcing people off their boards. It was only later on when we saw Jake Stone evolving the double roll into what's called the stone flip. The stone flip was landed by Jake Stone a number of times, including in competition. This has been called a roll to ARS, but at its core, it's a double roll into a forward spin. This movement looks extremely tricky, and I only remember seeing Armides Soliveres completing this after Jake originally landed it. Due to the generation of movement in doing the double roll, 
you can sometimes go off axis and that will send you into the spin rotation that we see at the end. This is possibly where Jake got the idea for this move and Jake is one of the most innovative riders of our time and this is not the last time that you will see him on this list. Dave Hubbard is the next rider on this list and that would be for the drop knee roll. Dave was the first person to land this on video. From the takeoff he gets barreled and you can see him really eyeing out the section going up gripping the rail with both hands and landing this move. Dave said you need a section coming out of the bowl with enough speed, making sure that you stay away from the flats. You want to try stay on the steeper part of the wave, using the spray from the landing as some padding to spread your weight through your extended body during the impact. You can then use the water coming from that impact and the wave itself to push you up after the impact to continue down the line after the move. Next, we will talk about the reverse invert. I've only ever seen one person do this and that is again Dave Hubbard when he was in Tahiti. This was during a section that they filmed where Dave goes absolutely crazy on this left-hander. When you watch this back, you can see how Dave goes up, does an invert in the opposite direction and then lands going straight into another roll. He says you have to hit the lip like you are going for a normal air move to get projection and then you are going to go into the reverse rotation to invert. This is a lot more stalled out compared to the reverse roll but the tricky part is the second change in direction to land after having the board above your head in that initial position. I've never seen this done other than in this video and I doubt we will see it done too many times again. The gainer flip was first done by David Tuaru from Tahiti back in 2012. We saw him doing these crazy gainer movements in this video and it was just so wild to see. Pierre-Louis Costes then put out an edit where he had been trying and landing some of these around 2014 but the gainer flip was really brought to everyone's attention after the Tahitian Kirahu Thibault got the cover of movement back in 2019. This was by far the craziest move I think I've ever seen with a huge looping effect looking to it. This is done in a way that you project up and off the lip instead of out towards the flats. You will then go into a similar motion to a loop or a backflip, sending your head back while being really high off the lip of the wave. The benefit about the gainer is that your legs will be moving faster than your head, allowing for your legs to take a lot more of the landing impact. As your head is spinning less than your legs, the motion of your head doesn't slam as much as in other moves. The Gorf is another weird and wonderful move in bodyboarding. This was originally done by Epo back in the day and later seems to be done by many others. This is similar to a forward air that's almost stalled when going up to hit the lip. It looks really different but it's a spin move done with a little bit of finesse. Using a lot of counter rotational elements you would need to first get enough projection. Instead of going up and out you want to get projected and then go down and in. One of the key parts is you need to have a good sense of body weight for your legs to go over and around. This is so your legs can just follow the normal direction and come over your body in order to land this move. The double air reverse or 720 is one of the moves that you have probably seen but it's still super crazy. This is two air reverses done in one move making it a 720 degree rotation. There have been many of these done as far back as I can remember from Jeff Hubbard in the early 2000s doing them at Pipeline on the No Friends Fall video all the way through to the latest done by Louis Finnegan landing one in a recent edit. These have also been tried and landed in competition. We saw Jake Stone doing them and we've seen some crazy videos from Nick Gornell landing a completed 720. This is one of those moves that if you get the right section and you have enough momentum, you can land one of these provided you can hold on through the brutal impact. You will need a section where you can get enough height and keep your legs tucked up through two rotations. Many have been tried and not landed, but I'm sure we will continue to see more completed in the future. Next, we are gonna look at the double air forward and to the best of my knowledge, nobody has completed this move yet. 
This is two air forwards in one movement. This move is a 540 degree spin as opposed to the 720 from the double air reverse before due to the fact that you are actually heading straight up and trying to land coming straight down. The most important part of this is staying compact through the second rotation. You have to be super precise so that you can stay compact into that second rotation. You will need to hit the lip already starting that first rotation. Whipping the head really hard to start and staying compact makes it difficult to adjust the spin in the air. Although Jeff seems to get slightly off axis when spinning, he also ended up off the back, but it just shows what the possibilities are for this one. The double backflip is another move that we have seen guys try, but it is another move that is yet to be landed. In the same video where PLC is trying gainer flips, he also tried the double backflip, but his slight lack of speed and height stopped the success of this. This is possibly because you need the perfect section to really get this move done, as well as have a lot of speed. And as you can see from this video, Jake Stone is being towed by a jet ski, which makes this move and the idea of landing it without jet power a bit unattainable, but not impossible. This next move is one that I think a lot of you haven't seen, and it is called the divert. This move was done originally by David Phillips, a rider from Kauai, and he is one of the only riders that I've seen do this. This move is an invert to reverse roll. Defils has done this a number of times, and shows a few of them in one video. When David Hubbard and Defils were trying to get this done, Dave tells me it was one of the most violent impacts he's ever had trying to land a move. This is due to having to generate your own inertia to counter the initial invert, that when you land, your body is going in the opposite direction of the initial rotation. This means you have a pile up of fast and counter momentum towards the landing. This is a crazy combination that I don't think too many people will try. The air hub is an air forward to roll and the key to this move is to get air. This was done in the initial stages by Jeff Hubbard when he was doing huge forward airs and the momentum of stalling out in the air for the landing meant he was going over his body and started turning them into rolls. Preferably, the entire move should be done in the air, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. This seems to be done when you have too much air or rotation when doing a forward air, and you can quickly move into a roll. It is gonna end up looking a little forced as the roll needs to happen faster than the air forward was performed. The roll is done in the second half of the move and you can't always expect the legs to be looking good as they will get tangled or pile up. But this is best done when completed in the air. Back in 2013, PLC landed the first ever no-handed backflip. At the time, riders were pushing each other really hard. Jake Stone with the stone flip, gainers were being invented, and a bunch more moves were being tried. As you know, Pierre is definitely one of the riders that was and still is innovating moves and pushing it to the next level. You can see him going for a no-handed backflip and completing it after many tries of loops, going off the back and losing his board. This video was something that I remember seeing and just thinking to myself, where is bodyboarding going and the possibilities of exactly where the sport can be pushed to. This is an epic example and watching Pierre try all of these moves and really pushing the sport to the next level has got me super amped to try new things and push my own level of riding. As you can see, many of these tricks are either the combination of basic and intermediate moves or doubling up on advanced moves. To execute them, you need maximum speed and the perfect lip or section so that you can get high enough to do multiple moves while still in the air. Whether you are someone like me who has tried and maybe landed a few of these, or if you are someone that looks at these in complete awe, these are probably some of the craziest moves in bodyboarding. All of these riders deserve huge props and really inspire me to keep pushing my own riding. If you can think of any bodyboarding moves that I might have forgotten, please drop them down in the comments below. Otherwise, share this with a friend, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next video.